We love horror movies from the 70s and 80s And we watch them for two days straight And then we go write a book Now we're looking back at every title One at a time in this podcast that we put out monthly Once we've had an episode for every movie It's time to meet up for another shock marathon Oh yeah, the red record button is red and it's time. That means we're recording the Shock Marathons podcast. I'm Matt Farley here with Charlie Roxburgh. Greetings, greetings. And Tom Scalza. Hello. And we're doing it. We are making this happen for our listeners, which uh, at last check, uh, I think the last episode got like 44 downloads in a month, guys. Hey. Nice. nice. Yes. That's including me. Well done, everyone. Did, Tom, did you download it? Uh, no. Okay, great. Charlie? No, I don't think so. Oh, so I'm the only um, one who downloaded it of the three of us. So that's great. Today we're discussing Valentine, which came out, oh my goodness, folks, 2001. Is that right, Charlie? Wow. Yeah. It's 2001, but it, it feels like the 90s, and in some ways it almost still feels like the 80s. It, it looks like the 90s and feels like the 80s. And so that's why, um, but we didn't know going into it. We just grabbed it and... Um, Let's discuss it. Before we start reviewing it, let's just get into it. What was that, Tom? It was unprecedented, I said. It was unprecedented. Picking up a 2001 movie. You're absolutely right. It, it was shot, It's by far the, the newest movie, almost by a decade, the newest movie that we've, uh, we've covered uh, in our marathons. So Valentine begins with a nerdy boy named Jeremy at a dance, asking girls to dance with him. And um, with each one that says no, we cut to his um, yearbook where he's written mean things about how he's going to get back at that each girl for what, what, how mean they are to him. You know, they, they don't just say no. They mean rudely say no. Up until, yeah. um, up until plain looking Dorothy um, is approached and... Um, She's into it, and the two of them are kissing under the stands, and uh, life is good, briefly, for good old Jeremy, but then some boys um, creep up and, um, and make fun of them. Dorothy's embarrassed and claims that um, Jeremy attacked her. The boys beat up Jeremy, strip him to his underwear in front of everyone. <laughs> Teacher's nowhere to be found. It's almost like a dream sequence in a way, because you're, you're thinking, like, is this all really happening there's no teachers these kids are like 12 years old and what's going on with the cherub mask because we're because it was a valentine's dance lots of people were wearing that mask because i saw someone else wearing it right correct yeah they're they're trying to bring that up and instill it in the movie okay yeah it's cupid it's cupid it's cupid kind of okay so um just just to add that opening scene like it's you said it's like a dream sequence. It's kind of like the whole, it sets the tone, you know, for, for this, the movie. It's not subtle ever, and that's great. Yeah, who wants yeah. subtlety? Not me. I do not it's, want subtlety. It's like we're gonna, we're gonna go, we're gonna go all out. It's like these these people really are. No, one, I've never met anyone that this is this mean in real life right. ever. But like yeah. everyone at this school is this mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, somehow it manages to not feel mean, at, to me as a viewer. <laughs> I think because it's sort of a glo- it's sort of a glossy movie and it doesn't it feels so not real that I don't feel too sad while I'm watching it. it and it's yeah. re- reminiscent of the beginning of prom night sort of, you know, in establishing like the the, you know, what they're going to get their comeuppance for later in life, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if I knew the, the the backstory of the redeemer a little better, maybe we could find some comparisons, but uh <laughs> Similar thing, right? A little bit with trying to get back at people. Yeah, I'd have to rewatch. Yeah. Is that High yeah. School Reunion Massacre? Is that the Redeemer? Okay, correct. Yeah. Okay, correct. yeah. Right. Good call. Much, we'll, much more subtle. We'll get there. <laughs> we'll get there someday. We'll get there. We'll get there. All right. So now it's 13 years later. One of the girls is Shelley, played by the great Katherine Heigl, before mm-hmm. she was a star. Although she had already acted in uh, My Father, the Hero, with Gerard Depardieu. Anyway, Ooh, so nice she point. she's having a she's having a date with a guy named Jason, who has some lettuce in his teeth. He's trying to impress her. It's it's a bad date, so bad in fact that she's written <laughs> "Help me" 
in the sauce on her plate. So I, she's, but she's not actually as. It's not like she's asking anyone to help her. She's just kind of just to the heavens, right, Tom? Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> she's just you know, she's kind of like doodling with her food. Okay. So He's way over the top that what, date. This way, is yeah. like. Yeah. This is like unprecedented cartooniness. <laughs> yeah, right. It's not the not the last <laughs> of unprecedented <laughs> no. cartooniness that I we wonder. Yeah, it's like the writers like never met any actual people before. <laughs> yeah, it's so over the top and just like come come on, to- let's bring it down a, a couple notches. She ends the date, which he's insulted, so he makes her pay for her half of the meal. And he still wants a kiss, and she tells him to seek uh, psychiatric help soon. And as soon as she leaves, he starts hitting on another woman. And I, th- this guy talks about himself in the third person too, right, Charlie? Yes. Do we ever as see? As much as he can. Do we yes, ever see him again, does. or is that the end of Jason? No, we do see him again, and it's it it, it, it is extra confusing. It's it's just the, <laughs> it sums up this movie perfectly. We can get back to it later, but okay. it sums up this movie perfectly. It's a bonus confusion. You watched it twice, <laughs> so you were able to pick up on that. Yep. Twice recently. Nice. I guess we've all seen it twice at this point. That's that's dedication. So now, yeah. after this date, Shelley. Then I guess it seems like it's right after the date, but who knows? But it's late at night, and she um, naturally is working on a dead body, and uh, she's in med school, you know? So after hours, most of the light's off, and um, very stylistically, like, creepy in a way that I don't enjoy very much. You know, that, that they, 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 they put too much effort into making it s- stylish, huh, Charlie? Yeah, it's a lot like Halloween 2, setting up the um, dark dark buildings and everything yeah, sort of. Yeah, but Halloween 2 is not glossy about it, though, you know? It's a little bit, yeah. I mean, it's a different era, but um, yes, this is more glossy, uh, more like a, a commercialized kind of look to it, but um, stylized situation with a, with a room where, you know, every almost all the lights are off, No, not a soul pretty much is around, you know? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. So Chad is the name of the dead body. She promises to him that she'll be gentle. Um, and she tells him she's refreshed that he's the strong, silent type. Yes. Um, then she hears a noise and goes to check it out. She's scared by some guy who leaves after wishing her luck on the finals tomorrow. Okay, what is going on here? Then she sees a card hanging up from the locker where he just was. <laughs> and it's addressed to her. It's an evil card stating that he hopes she bleeds from the neck. With the motion, as you open it, it makes like a stabbing motion at the neck. So, that was not left by that guy, though, right? No. No, 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 no. It's it's awesome. <laughs> so, <laughs> that guy, just he just happened to be there. And on the commentary, I think they said that they wanted to have an extra like jump scare in there. This reminds me of... of the room a little bit, where there's these characters who just pop up and then they're gone and you... This guy, yeah. he he's there for a jump scare. It feels like they're trying to build something with him a little bit, and mm-hmm. then he's gone. But then they talk about him at length later, <laughs> um, because because of his. He's the last uh, person to see her alive, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's oh. it's pretty amazing, but um, funny funny situation. The card just happened to be there. Her locker just happened to be open, and this is the first time we get to see. If you take like a minute or less to think about the complexity of these cards. <laughs> My theory is that it would take would have taken him 13 years between when he was mad at the girls till now just to make each of the cards to, to learn the craft and then actually make these individual animated, you know, pop-up book style cards. Now, she's barely phased by this uh terrifying card. She goes right back to the corpse. <laughs> Now, uh, this guy, this killer is really clever because while she's been away, he he went in and he moved the off camera. He took the corpse and shoved it in a closet, and then he replay he 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 laid down on the gurney where the the, the corpse was. And he only got this opportunity because a random student <laughs> made a noise. Yeah, he's <laughs> improvising. My, my moment has come. <laughs> 
the killer is improvising and 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 beautifully. So she so she returns and goes to to st- stab it with a scalpel and then notices that it's not a a, a corpse, it's a living person. Then she runs uh, away and straight to the closet where the corpse is, so it falls on her. Um, she grabs the scalpels, running around the area, um, and then the guy grabs her from behind. Now he's chasing her. He's wearing the Cupid mask. Um, uh, she enters a room filled with body bags and hides in one of them, um, but um, he figures that out, and he kills her. And um, much like, we, I forgot to mention, but the, when the boy was rejected um, by all the girls, he got nosebleeds. And um, we see that there's a bloody nose coming out of the mask. And that's the, the intro. Well, pretty effective intro, though, Tom. Yeah, I mean, it's perfectly fine. Like, there's nothing, you know, there's nothing all that original about it. But it's 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 well done. You know, the lighting is, like you said, it's it's a little bit too stylized. But it's perfectly fun. Like, the acting is fine. Like, there's nothing. There's nothing to really complain about. Uh, Charlie. Yeah, actually, it's like a by not trying to force reinvent the wheel. It's it's endearing. Yes. And it's actually done less than trying to reinvent the wheel. So it actually makes this like well, more unique in a way to just go with it and you yeah. know honor the conventions and do. Do their thing. I thought, isn't it funny that the killer got so close to risking his stomach being cut? Yeah! Though <laughs> I, <laughs> he was he was within four millimeters of being killed. End of movie. <laughs> but he he wanted that good good moment. It was yeah, it was too good of a prank to not to not. And he, I don't even think he could see it. His face might have been like covered up or something at that point. But he was oh, just like and, yeah. He just had to imagine that she got scared and then chuckle in the shadows once he ran away. <laughs> So now put his shirt back on. we got yeah. to enjoy that f- opening date with uh, Jason and um, the girl who just died. Uh, now we get to go to some speed dating wh- where Kate and um, Paige. Paige is played by Denise Richards, and I guess she's the star of the movie, or at least the biggest name at the time. Um, they're, they're having a, a good conversation about whether they should do the speed dating, and they agree to do it. And then we get a montage of all the losers that they meet. And then the only good guy uh, there is b- matched up with Kate, and um, and Paige immediately steals uh, him from her. And Kate's fine with it. They're giggly about it, you know? I guess that's just what Paige does. She's kind of uh, right. She's you know, she's always looking for a guy, it seems. It's, it's yeah. almost as if the movie kind of wants to make a real statement about the, the current state of dating. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> which is awesome because you you're making a slasher, and they're kind of like you know what? Let's chime in on speed dating. Let's chime in on how how young people are are doing things nowadays. Yeah, I don't know when speed dating started, but I feel like they they were on the cusp of it right here. It seems in '01. I I don't recall hearing about it yeah. that early. You're probably right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And one one other thing on the speed dating, I I swear that one of those guys is at the party later, just in the background. Uh, yes, like, he is. I, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, no, I'm 100 percent sure. And they mentioned it on the commentary. Just because it's a small well, world. It's great, they, but the, it feels like just this because. world is like there's only like 50 people in this world, and you know, and they all, you know, kind of weave in and out of each other's. I lives. like that. I like that a lot. That's, yeah. that's good stuff. Yeah, yeah. it simplified this world. It's sty- it, the the world in a good way. Like, okay. There's one cop who they only talk to. They talk to one <laughs> cop. It's like it's like something we would put one of our movies. You yeah, know? it's very yeah. simple. Yeah, I like it. I like that a lot. Okay, they get the news that that um, Catherine Heigl's dead. So now we're at her funeral. Um, Kate's on again, off again. Alcoholic boyfriend joins her to support her. Um, he's played by the guy from Bones, David Boreans or whatever it is, something like that. Mm-hmm. He's a re- yep. he's a reporter who he just got an article on the front page, but he also has a bottle of booze in the car. He assures her it's just a gift for a friend, and that he's been sober six weeks. His name is Adam. He wants to do dinner. She she reminds him last time they had dinner, they ended up in a hotel, at, in Lake Tahoe for three days. So instead, she says she'll call him. Um. So now we got the four friends, um, Shelley. 
Who's Shelly? She's the other blonde. Shelly and Kate are the blondes. Kate's the main blonde. Then there's Shelly. Wait, who's Lily? I think she- Shelly was... Shelly just was died? Heigl. Catherine Heigl. Oh, Shelly's dead. Help me out. Who are the Who are the four <laughs> ladies? Um, Phoebe. Lily's got the curly hair. Okay, those yep. the two blondes are Lily and Kate. Then um, who? What's um, Denise Dor- Richards? Paige. She's Paige. Paige. And then and Dorothy. Dorothy was the plain Dorothy. the plain looking one who's super rich. Mm-hmm. Okay, they're interviewed by the cop at the cemetery, and he mentions a guy named Jason Marquette is missing. What's that? What is that, Charlie? That might be the guy who was in the back room and uh, with the jump scare. Okay, okay. And he has and the, he, the same and initials. He has the initials too. JM. I'm so confused. <laughs> <laughs> or is Jason Marquette the killer? One of the, the killer pseudonyms? No. No. I don't think so. I think that was like a red herring. A, a lot like, of red like herring. They want to mislead us. Jason or Jeremy or <laughs> <something>. <laughs> they go out of their way to try to mislead us. I thought Denise Richards yeah. was the killer. This time through, I forget. I didn't remember. I was like, it's Denise Richards, obviously. <laughs> Did you either of you get that, Tom? Denise Richards? You ne- you never no, thought I it was her. That. I, I didn't, didn't get that vibe at all. Wow. I well, I remembered. I, I remembered her, her ending. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I um. But. I totally thought it was her. Maybe she did some of the killings. <laughs> I'm just throwing that out there. Multiple <laughs> killer theory. All right. Possible. So now Dorothy comes home to, <laughs> to her mansion, <laughs> where her dad. <laughs> this is my favorite. <laughs> and his young wife are playfully, chasing each other up the stairs of the mansion. Um, <laughs> and uh, she gets a card saying roses are red, violets are blue. They'll need dental records to identify you. And once again, she's just like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, doorbell rings. It's a guy she hardly knows. She's recently met, and um, he needs a place to stay. And she's like, yeah, sure, you can stay in the guest room. Um, yeah, Campbell is his name, and Campbell. To to me, he looks. You could tell he was a jerk right away, and I think that's like, I thought you were supposed to to get that, but when I was listening to the commentary, the director was like, yeah, this guy, he he feels sincere and genuine here, as if he's like a nice guy. I was like, I don't know about that. I I thought he was a a freeloader from the moment I saw him. Working in startups. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, he's got no cash. No, no, he's bad news. All right, so now... Kate, we cut to Kate at her apartment. She's in the shower. She's uh, wrapped up in a towel, investigates a noise. It's nothing. Um, but now the water has stopped working, so she calls Mari, the landlord, to tell him that she needs to get the shampoo out of her hair. Um, and she's forced to use the toilet to rinse her hair. So that uh, poor Kate. Charlie. There is so much going on there. I mean... It's it's like um, the part with OJ in Naked Gun almost where he puts his hand on the stove and the wet paint and everything because she, the water breaks. Then she goes out and she calls the landlord. He doesn't pick up, leaves a message. Then the, the her own phone rings, right? And I think someone's talking to her. Then she wanders down the hall. Yeah, we're yeah. I'm about to get there for that. Part. Yeah, yeah. But just just in this minute here, there is like yeah. so much going on for her. It's, Doesn't it's, she uh, also like reach for a um like a a bottle of water that turns out to be empty? It's uh, there's yeah. a little bit in there, but it was not, not enough. enough. Yeah. So she's everything's not going enough. Wrong. Yeah. Poor Kate. Um. So she notices the apartment and door it, is open. Tom. Well, did the the the, the water being off? It was just. Not that wasn't connected to anything. Bad luck. Right? It just happened yeah. to go off. Right. Right. Bad luck. Okay, that's what I thought. <laughs> There's a I'm not I love sure, it. It's totally unnecessary. <laughs> <laughs> it yeah, could be. It must yeah, be. He might have gone be. down and and shut off the water valve because he knew the she creepy was shower. neighbor. Yeah. No, the killer. Because the killer, killer dropped off the note because he um. His mask was in the door. Uh, well, we're about to get to it. There's a ringing mm. bell. It turns out it's the elevator because the mask is keeping the elevator door from closing. And then Gary, oh, my God. Gary, the neighbor, you uh, opens the door and sees Kate. And 
and Tom, why? Like Gary speaks in rhyme. Why? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Just because he can, I guess. That's, <laughs> what that's, a weird that's his, thi- like. His what thing. a weird thing. Like no. Wh- but why? I like. I like it in a way because so many of the other characters are completely they, forgettable. Yeah, you're right. They and, blend like, in. He's got at least something. He's got something to remember him by. Yeah. So he mm. actually like says, like, hey, date, you're great. How about a – hey, Kate, you're great. How about a date? You know? And it goes on. Yeah. And it's just it like, keeps going. What are, what are we watching? Yeah. This is crazy. But you're right. Why not? You know? Why not? She responds, you're scary, Gary. So that that's a good little – and Gary yeah, looks like he um, it looks like the hair and makeup people were like, how can we make him look a little weird? You know, they kind of like tried to, I don't know, the way they make his sideburns or his hair and his eyes a little bit. It, it's funny. He almost, yeah. it almost looks like a Halloween costume of a weird, like creepy rock dude or something. I don't know. Now yeah. we, now we got. So wait, did she get a note there? Did. Or not? Uh, maybe not. I thought Kate got a an evil card, but it, maybe it comes later. So Paige and Lily now are hanging out at one of their apartments, or maybe the, I don't even know. Maybe they live together. But um, the, um, doorbell rings. There's chocolates at the door. Tis a well known fact that beauty is skin deep. Savor the taste. You are what you eat. Love J M. And um, which one of them? Lily eats them, and there's maggots in the chocolate. Mm. And that's the why I dedication. Again. That's why I thought Paige. That's why I thought Paige did it because she like allowed Lily to eat the chocolates. But mm. uh, I'm just throwing that out there. Um, how, how, so the kill you, did the killer craft that you're getting here? Getting to did the killer have yeah, the maggots yeah, and craft you, the show? How do you make chocolates? <laughs> with, it's so much work. <laughs> <laughs> and on the commentary, they say that they went to all the work to make them that way so that you could see it being broken open and see the maggots, but then that they never really needed it in shot to happen all as one. So they just ended up cutting to it anyway. <laughs> so they went through the pain, the pain that we're supposed to imagine the killer went through. Just so, see him at home, like, baking. He's like, ah, it's not coming together. <laughs> and, <laughs> and before you move on, Farley, I got to ask. Did, number one, did you, is this girl holding, like, rosary beads after she's kind of getting over this uh, maggot thing? Have you, did you guys notice that? Or prayer beads or something? No. I didn't, I didn't really get that. But anyway, she's, like, chugging orange juice, which seems yeah. to me the funniest thing to, to have after – a weird, yeah. like, disgusting thing in your, you know, you just would have water or something. And it's the yeah, first. Yeah, or like hydrogen peroxide. <laughs> yeah, scope, or I don't know. It's like, <laughs> but it's like the first of um, two or three times that Minute Made orange juice is like really featured. Nice. I love a good product good. placement. All right, so later they're trying to figure out who JM is. They don't think of the guy who the cop just mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> it was very much spelled out. Just like earlier today at that funeral you were at, they the cop mentioned someone with JM is missing. But the JM thing is just so like, does it even matter? I don't. I'm not even sure. But we'll we'll just let it go. Then Paige mentions Jeremy Milton, the kid from the beginning of the movie. They think about how mean they were to him. Now we got Kate, Paige, and Lily. Oh God! They're at the art show. Oh my yes. God! Yes. <laughs> the artist um, is named Max. He's dating Lily. Um, and oh, this art show is just like hundreds of televisions, hundreds of big televisions with all these like weird, quirky, scary, odd images uh, on loops, and. It's horrible. Who wants to look at this? A and how much, Tom? How much does it cost to put on that uh, show? It's ridiculous. It's, it's there's so many screens. There's like there's like hundreds of screens. And some of them are enormous. And this is mm. 2001. Yeah. <laughs> like it was not cheap to get those kind of screens back then. It's crazy. Yeah. It's, just, yeah. It, it's crazy. So it's horrible to begin with, and just so impractical. Oh, what? And th- this is wh- like the worst of the glossy, like uh, uh, even it's, it's got like a sleazy feel to it too. It just feels like 
gross and sleazy mm-hmm. and glossy, and it's what we don't like about movies made at these times. Um, but at least it's at least you got to laugh at how ridiculous it is, Charlie. It, it's a complicated issue because the artist is sleazy himself as a character, and mm-hmm. the movie feels sleazy showing him and his art, but it's also supposed to be casting a bad light on him. So it's just mm-hmm. complicated. I don't know if they wanted to have their cake and eat it too a little bit, but um But the it, characters, the girls don't like it. So that, that gives yeah, it Yeah. That's right. More we're on the, we're on their side. I just didn't right. like being I didn't want to be there. I was there too long too long to just be in that place. It was not a fun place to be. Charlie. And do you did yeah. you guys notice I'm sure that Jason was there from the beginning with the spinach in his teeth? Oh, is that where he comes back? Oh, no. And guess get this. He waves to Denise Richards. Oh, uh, oh yeah, yeah. And they they wave to him as if they know him. Right. <laughs> but he wasn't. He only had one date with their friend that they hadn't seen in a while. Everyone knows each other yeah. in this world. It's just it's just yeah. done for the audience's benefit. They're like, imagine these two could know each other. He <laughs> knew your friend. So no, that's good, Kate. I think Kate tells them about how the Cupid mask was at her at the elevator. Dorothy remembers that Jerry M- Milton wore such a mask. Um, I it, love those scenes. I love when the characters just like chat about trying to figure out the weird stuff, and then also usually the girls would be just be like, "Eh, skip it," or you know, <laughs> explain it away. This is good genre right here. Now for the art show, the ladies and men are forced to opposite sides of the place. Um, I don't, I I guess, I don't know why that's happening, but then Lily is getting intimate with Max at the show and another girl shows up and starts unbuttoning her shirt. Turns out Max invited the girl to join them. So Lily's mad and she leaves. Um, but this is in the middle of the show, right, Charlie? Yeah, I think, I mean, I think the show is just you wander through at your own pace. It's just kind of like all the screens are on. Um, yeah. I did like that when the artist introduced his show, he mentioned Valentine's day. And that, that's like one of the first times that we start to get into the fact that it's a holiday horror movie because um, we've seen the cards before and stuff, but it's, it's not as much Valentine's day stuff going on as, as you would think the girls haven't been talking about it a ton. Yeah. They uh, do not dwell mm-hmm. on it. At, in fact, the party at the end, I don't think is it a Valentine's party. It is, but it you know there's the cupid that's shown a lot and like lots of heart like red colors and hearts. But they, um, they do decorations. not dwell on it. They don't dwell on it. They don't dwell on it. This art exhibit though it reminds me of how we talk about college courses in horror movies. You yeah. could do like a similar essay art exhibits in horror movies or yeah. something, and how they're just like they're so unbelievable, but. It's great, yeah. you know, like the Bigfoot class, or you know, in uh, Night of the Demon, or um, does Pieces have a ridiculous? There's like, you know, there's ridiculous college courses that you wish you could take, including the Urban Legend class, which was the same director. Just everyone in sitting around talking about the great urban legends. That's like their class. Yeah, it's like yes, I yeah. want to be in that class. I'll talk about urban. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So then mm. Lily gets lost in a maze of these ridiculous videos, and she's shot in the stomach with an arrow by the Cupid guy whose nose is bleeding, and then she um, flips over a railing into a dumpster. Um, yes. Last thing. Uh, director said that this was an homage to The Lady from Shanghai by Orson Welles, the uh, maze. <laughs> right. Uh, wow. Wow. <laughs> I did not pick up on that. Yeah, Orson Orson is rolling over in his grave, the poor guy. Um meanwhile, Dorothy and her date, that's the house guest. He's the investment um the the startup guy who's who's sleeping he's staying in the guest room. They bump into a woman who's mad at him about how he like ran off with all her money or something, right? Is yep. that, that's what's going on there. So his it's like his ex-girlfriend. He, he's got a mad ex-girlfriend that we're going to meet again later. Then Kate meets mm-hmm. up with her boyfriend at the bar. She orders a Corona. He orders a club soda. Then she changes her order to club soda. 
you'd think that given the fact that the, her, his alcoholism is such a major uh, issue in the relationship that she a they wouldn't meet at a bar, you know, <laughs> 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 and b she wouldn't instantly get a, a a corona. But hey, what what do you know? They they, they want a, they want her to be endearing character, and and she's very likable actress so that that's kind of what they're going for there but good points <laughs> <laughs> she says she'll have to wait a while before they get back together oh now the three girls meet with the police investigator oh i love it page re- <laughs> page reports that the other girl um lily is out of town which is another reason i thought page did it i thought page was like trying to cover up for um for the fact that she she killed lily being like oh yeah she's out of town you know yeah, it works its magic uh-huh. on you. These <laughs> these red hair. Yeah, let, let it go. I'm sorry. That's that's it. That's a, a good one. Uh, he shows them a Valentine that um, Catherine Heigl had received from Jeremy Melton. Paige gives dirty looks to the cop for no apparent reason. What is going on with um, Denise Richards? She's just <laughs> she's so like uh, she just wants to fight. She hates the cop for no reason. Uh, and always with a smart answer, <laughs> and unnecessarily yeah. so. Tom, tell me more about, about your thoughts yeah. on that. I, I I don't know. She, I mean, now that you're saying all this stuff about the red herring stuff, it it does. If you look at it in that light, it's it's weird that she has this weird chip on her shoulder all the time, and she's she's always kind of pushing people away, and like. Uh, I never really saw. I didn't think of it that way when I was watching it, but and she, she she's unhappy all the time. Yeah, she needlessly tortures a man with with candle wax later on in the movie too, which we'll get to. But uh, mm. there's a lot going yeah. on with. Paige. Well, she doesn't. Yeah, she doesn't just you know honestly express her opinions. She she like I don't know. She takes her 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 reactions to another level. Like she can't yeah. doesn't just say, oh, you know, I. I don't like you. She's, she's very, like, gonna, ad, yeah, gonna... very adversarial. She just, you know, yeah. she, she won't let anything go. So after the meeting, Dorothy admits that Jeremy didn't really attack her way back in middle school. She made it up, huh, Charlie? That's, uh, yeah. that, what a shame, you know? She uh, she was young, too, and she just panicked, and she accused the, <clears throat> the kid of, uh, you know, accosting her under the bleachers, which led to his miserable life. You know, he went to many psychiatric uh hospitals because of it right charlie yeah it's pretty much her her doing and then i guess other people like made up fake uh reports that he was the reason for the fights and everything so yeah you you get a you get your classic um prom night kind of somebody was wronged and uh you know payback kind of here it's payback gosh darn it Mm-hmm. Um. So Kate's doing some research into Jeremy when. Um, oh, I love this. <laughs> tell us about it. <laughs> well, she's she's in her office. This is what you're talking about, right? Yeah. She her opens up like a browser window. Day. Yeah. Types in Jeremy Melton. <laughs> she turns in her chair a little bit or something, and then her Adam comes in. Her boyfriend. They start talking. She never hit enter, and they never cut back to it, and they never. She doesn't get any results. And uh, they just go have a walk. I like computers. And, you know, but she has, on her desk, she has a file, though. And she's looking Did at the file. That? Yeah, she doesn't hit yeah. enter. She just opens the file and reads, like, the report about yeah. Jeremy Melton or something. I, I don't it's know so why confusing. they even showed. Maybe it was 2001 and they wanted to show that you could look up things on the internet. Yeah, it was cutting but, edge. But it's funny. It would be the kind of thing where a quick... You know, someone watching it would say, "Hey, why just cut that part out? Why is she typing it in and then not get not having it? Yeah, hitting, no results. <laughs> <laughs> the so, mystery deepens." So her alcoholic boyfriend shows up. They go out to dinner. Um, she invites him up afterwards, but he doesn't want her to regret it tomorrow, so he says no. Um, now the three girls are are meeting with a detective at the station. He reports that Jeremy's parents died in a fire that was ruled an accident, but um, there's implications that perhaps it wasn't. Now, what what the heck is going on? What is the Jeremy situation? <laughs> so <laughs> he's he's taken a new name, and um, like no one knows what he looks like. Why why does nobody? Know? How how does the cop 
the cop gets all this info on Jeremy, but he doesn't get a, a photo or anything. Is that what we're to believe, Charlie? Yes. Yeah. They have to age estimate it up with software. Um, I, yeah. Somehow he, he went off the grid for 13 years or something. But, but I mean, I thought he was locked up. When he wasn't up. in the hospital. Yeah, he was I locked guess. up for several of those years, it seems. <laughs> but, okay, we'll let it yeah. go. Um, he uses a computer to show what he might look like now based on an old photo. Uh, the more, that's marvelous. <laughs> more it looks work. like all the, all the other characters. <laughs> <laughs> It's great. Then the detective questions the girls on who they are dating. Dorothy has a weak explanation for her month-long affair with her boyfriend, who's now living in the mansion with her. Paige is outrageously snippy with the detective, who asks her to stay after the uh, after the talk. And um, what happens? I love it. Oh, one of the best moments in the movie. So good. The cop in his fifties, probably. You know talking mm-hmm. to the, the 20 23 year old um page and he's like what's going what's going on here between us and she's like what what are you talking about he's like this tension between us <laughs> and uh he's got his hand on her leg and um oh it's spectacular it's really good she turns him down but uh, what a great moment charlie i i think it's it might even be her best moment of the movie because she can more than hold her own, like in this kind of a situation, I think. Yeah. Uh, that uh, Denise Richards as an actress, and and also I guess her character. Yeah. And this other guy is really fun, over the top, um, almost like a, an '80s cop. Um, yeah. 1980s police cop. Yeah, he's uh, like Del Vecchio movie. a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, just really confident, and 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 before there were any rules about political correctness, he's just over the top. So it was fun. It was really fun. It could have been worse. It, it almost sounds sleazier than it is, but yeah. because it's so cartoony, it's okay. It's totally okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and in the commentary, he, they said that the director was like, well, a lot of people don't like this, and some people love it. Oh, so I, I could see that. I guess we love it. But. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nothing wrong with it. So now, now what is going Now the killer kills the poet? Kate's neighbor is... Is that what? Uh, the killer comes yeah, into well, an apartment where the iron is on, and he kills the guy with the <laughs> iron. I, I think it's the weird neighbor who who speaks in rhyme, right? Is that yes. what? Yes. And yes. But that's it's Kate's apartment, though, isn't it? Isn't yes. the weird neighbor in Kate's apartment? Yes. Oh, that's what? what he does. So the weird neighbor yeah. happened to be like spying. He goes in there and tries her clothes on and stuff. Routinely. Right. And earlier in the movie, she mentions that some underwear is missing. But the funny thing is, is I wonder if the creepy Gary had planned to iron some of her unmentionables because <laughs> yeah. that would be yeah, the, pretty iron. much the only reason for its, its being on. Yeah. So, okay. So, so that, that happened. And on the commentary, <laughs> the director is like, this is not exactly in line with the killers like meth, you know um grudges and right. previous things but we needed a killing here <laughs> so it's like hey, i guess it works yeah he but... was very very <laughs> honest and fun i Good enjoyed the commentary a lot um I don't, that's cool. I don't usually listen to them but this one was great okay so now kate comes home yeah. and her boyfriend the alcoholic boyfriend is in front of the building he's got a lollipop for her um, she goes up. And, okay, she so she goes upstairs, and who's in her apartment? Paige, who has let herself in, <laughs> which is more proof that Paige is perhaps the killer. Why is she there? Did neither of you thought she might be the killer, huh? No. Are they doing it just as a red herring, or am I reading into it too much? I don't know. I didn't even see it as a red herring, but. Because it's, someone it was just killed, killed in that too. apartment, and she's in there. Yeah. But the, the genius thing is, is that the movie's sometimes so disorganized. Yeah. And I think there are a <laughs> lot. Time permitted for recording your message. Uh, if tough. you are satisfied with your message, press <laughs> one to listen to your message. Press two to erase and re-record. We accidentally just... called Tom's. Um, we accidentally called Tom's cell phone, and it's been recording. Are you still there? You have reached the maximum time permitted for recording your message. If you are satisfied with your message, press 1 it? to listen to your you message. Press, one? press 2 to erase and re-record. Press 3. Beep. 
All right. Sorry, but we're going to keep that for uh, the listeners. Are you still there? You uh, have reached the maximum time permitted for recording you have to hang your up, message. Really. If you are satisfied with your message, press did. 1 to listen to your message. Press 2 to erase and re-record to send your goodbye. Yes, success. All right. We're keeping I was it. just saying, like, the movie's so disorganized that they might not have even really thought why Paige should be there. It could be a day or two later, for all we know. Uh, yeah, that or just... Yeah, the, that or it's just they didn't even really like all the so much is happening sometimes in close yeah. quarters with everybody knowing each other and over at each other's place and all this. It could just be, hey, you're just in her other room. Don't think about it. Come out of there, you know, and then she just does it on, on the set, you know, so. OK, so um, more orange juice coming up, I think. Dorothy calls. The apartment to say she's upset about the detective questioning her boyfriend. And Paige suggests that Dorothy gets intimate with her boyfriend to make up up for it. Uh, Then the detective calls Kate. Um, Paige answers, but then gives it to Kate to report that they picked up Jeremy. Who's Jeremy? (laughs) What does this mean? Wait, Jeremy the killer? Is he the guy from the beginning? That's the name of the guy from the beginning. Is wait, what? What does that mean? So he wasn't killed then, right? So did they pick up Jer? Like, okay, listeners, um, we're gonna tell you what happened. But the the alcoholic boyfriend is the killer. So, is that what happened? <laughs> was it was it him who got picked up? Do you guys think? No, no, no. It was somebody else that they held. I think well, it was either the guy that Catherine Heigl bumped into in the hallway or someone right. we never met. I'm not exactly. I'm not sure. I, I'm gonna hold out. Let's. I'm holding out and saying perhaps that he gave her a lollipop, and then he went and got picked up, <laughs> and then he gets let out in time to do all the killing at the end. Let's see what happens. Dorothy gets her boyfriend a nice watch for Valentine's Day. Oh, did I forget to mention? Tom's favorite moment. I think I didn't write it down, but the um, Dorothy's oh, the, stepmom, who the is like stepmom. Yeah. this mail order bride. Do you want to just take a moment to talk about her, Tom? Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's the best. I love these kind of moments. Is is you know, it could have been just she she's a an only child living in this mansion. Her parents are kind of you know hands off, like you know, just not there out, out, you know, socializing or whatever, but they don't do that. They have the father be remarried to this very young Asian woman. And so then she calls her a mail order bride. And then the, the, the wife says, she just called me a mail order bride. And they're like bickering in front of the, the father slash husband. He comes down and has to pick sides. It's, so unnecessary and great oh, yeah it's so good it's yeah great, you're right it's great it's maybe great. one of the best moments of the movie just to deliver all that extra stuff it's really good yeah yeah it's great and then where are they later it's we never see gone. them again that was earlier in the movie i forgot to note it but yeah that that's that's so good i really enjoyed that yeah. um so Dorothy gets her boyfriend the watch, and uh, now now we cut to them. They're in bed together after uh, an unsatisfactory um, moment of intima- intimacy. She goes to take a shower. He interrupts her to give her a necklace. Um, meanwhile, at the pool, then he goes down to the pool, and he's angrily making a business phone call, after which... He seems to just throw the cell phone and break it. Do you guys notice that? Yeah. He doesn't. Yeah. yeah. He has. He has no money. What's he do? What's he throwing his phone for? But hey. He was angry. <laughs> he was very angry. Then he's asked via intercom to relight the pilot in the basement, and he's mad about it. He's like, "I'm not your servant." You know, it's great stuff. So again, I don't know why the director thought that this was character was likable in any way, Charlie. I know, yeah, I agree. He's miserable. So that that guy, so that, that whole scene, he says like, oh, "Great, great." Oh, great. <laughs> He's always <laughs> for like five pumping. minutes. Yes, <laughs> lots. And that of was pumping. probably the first thing she ever asked him to do. I know. And he, and he was already like in the basement. He just had to go. He was the closest one there. 
Yeah. So he goes down to relight the furnace, and then he's killed with an axe. Um, why? Okay, why does the killer want to kill this guy? <laughs> this is once <laughs> yeah. again out of character. Like he only wants to kill the four girls, right? I, in theory. <laughs> It's the classic thing that happens in the 80 slashers too. You, you, you know, quite right. often you could be Kill like, well, why? Others. What about this person? This person? Yeah. And unless, either they got in the way, or it's unless know. it's Denise Richards and she just wants to make life miserable for her friends who aren't really nice to her, you know, because she hates I liked, them. Yeah, that, that's true. I, I like the the axe placement near the water yeah. heater. It almost seemed like they were trying to sell it that they had like a, a fire, like a wood fire water heater or something. <laughs> Yeah, like how close there's it no was. reason to have an axe there, but it's great. <laughs> so now it's the huge Valentine's Day party at Dorothy's house. She's upset because Campbell isn't there. Kate's uh, boyfriend, who is the killer, I guess, he arrives as Dorothy whines about her situation. Um, you notice Kate calls her Darth? Yeah. That's interesting. Mm, yeah. Nice touch. Uh, never heard anyone... <laughs> Use that as a nickname. <laughs> Me neither. It's, it's almost harder to say that than, than Dorothy. <laughs> Slow-mo of Paige dancing. Um, and then the guy from Speed Dating the, that she stole from Kate. Um, or wait, did she steal him from Lily? Wh- whoever Kate. she... She stole Kate. him from Kate? Okay. Um, yeah. He approaches. They dance. They kiss. He wants to take her upstairs. Everything seems to be going well. And, you know... Paige seems into this, like in her character seems that she would be into this, but turn turns yeah. out, you know, she goes upstairs with him. Uh, he disrobes. She ties him to the bed, and then pours burning hot candle wax uh, over his groin. It, <laughs> I mean, this is just yeah. like sadistic, <laughs> sadistic torture, for, for no reason, like. Yeah, I mean, the guy was a jerk, was, but I mean, she yeah. she definitely didn't need to do that. Yeah, like, she could have just said, "No, I don't want to." Yeah, I don't want to go, like, go downstairs. I, I don't want to go upstairs with you, you know, or you know, <laughs> stop taking your clothes off. Or there's many moments before that where you know, like it's just so weird, and I hate to harp on yeah. it, but it was yet more proof to me at the time that she was definitely the killer. I was absolutely sure <laughs> of it. Um. Yes. Uh, did you guys get the feeling too that this party really popped up out of nowhere? Yes. It's like the party of the century, right? <laughs> there are hundreds of people there with so much elaborate decorations and lighting and planning and everything. Yeah, it cost and like hundred fifty thousand dollars to put on this party. <laughs> they weren't even really like, oh my god, I'm so excited for your party, or like you see them setting up. It was just like all of a sudden, boom. Mansion party of the century. It would be like a shindig at Lionel Richie's, like an elaborate one. But uh, I, I thought that was funny, and and that's kind of a charming thing about this movie. It, it has a lot of um, not overplannedness to it. Yeah, I just need yeah. to dwell on this one more time. She pours burning hot candle wax over his his naked groin, like and. Why, like I don't know if they've established that she's feisty and um you know and and up for a fight, but I mean it just seems it seems something that a sadistic uh, killer would do, not that like she's an innocent victim, Charlie. I'm ninety nine percent sure that the filmmakers want you, uh, you the audience to think that she's sassy and that he was a jerk and he entirely deserved it. What? And we're supposed to be on her side. Wow. That's that's this movie's somewhat misguided in in many ways, <laughs> and uh, they don't always hit their marks. That's part of it. I think I really really think that's it. I don't think you're supposed to think about her emotional like roller coasters or read anything into it other than he should have been more gentlemanly to her. Yeah. Amazing. Or done things. I mean, she was she was happy to go up to the bedroom, but she wanted things to be done in a certain more polite manner. But and she's but that's not her character either. She's like, uh, you know, she's up for everything it seems. But hey, I'm, uh, we don't need to dwell. So now the girl Campbell's ex girlfriend shows up at the party and uh, and and says that 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 necklace that you got there, Dorothy, that's mine. And Campbell's no good. So Dorothy's upset. 
Oh, then Max, the artist, uh, shows up. <laughs> He's looking for Lily. He says she's not in L.A. He called her office and she never showed up. Then he creepily compliments um, Kate's looks. Oh, that's a good line, Farley. If we, that would have been a good one if I had remembered it. To, oh, what he says to her? Yeah, he, it's kind of fun. What does he say? I forget what he, he's like, you know, yeah. that, 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 that dress really... It's suits you, or something suits. Like yeah, something like that. But I don't know. It's kind of fun. It's I, both cheesy yeah, and yeah. Tom. I don't have any. Uh, I, there were no lines that that I deemed worthy of playing the uh, in the podcast. Not that I don't like the movie, but just nothing really like stood out. It just it it stays at a a, a solid level, but it never uh, in terms of dialogue never goes totally great. Yeah, understand. Yeah, that's true. Understandable. Mm-hmm. There aren't a lot of moments like that that stand out. So then um, Campbell's old girlfriend goes through his thing. She puts on the the watch that he had just given received from Dorothy. Then she comes down some back stairs and finds the killer dragging the body of the maid who's been just <laughs> killed <laughs> off camera. Wrong place at the wrong yeah. time. <laughs> Are they just doing that so we think that Dorothy's the killer because we've established earlier that Dorothy and the maid aren't getting along, I guess, perhaps? But um, she whacks the guy with a pool stick. She hides in the sauna. She sees Campbell's dead uh, to her right where she's hiding. The killer seems to have left. She opens the door and makes her way out a little bit before getting grabbed by the killer, thrown through a glass shower door, and then her neck sliced. So she's dead. Then Kate reports to Dorothy that Lily never showed up in L.A. Kate calls the detective, and it turns out they had to let Jeremy go, which is why I think that they actually did have Jeremy, like the the alcoholic boyfriend, in custody briefly. Anything, any any chance that's accurate, Charlie? I don't think they knew his name was Jeremy. But no. No, who's Jeremy that they let go? Why is that? Why is that relevant? I that's don't. Different. No, but <clears throat> because he says I had to let Jeremy go. He could be coming to the party. Stay put. Stay in groups. I'm on my way. He says. So I think I honestly think that after that guy gave her a lollipop, he was picked up by the cop and then released. That's what I think. Wow! Imagine that. But it's not the guy that they had in custody was not Jeremy Melton. It was somebody, Jason Metzger or something like that. You sure? I don't know. I got it's his Jeremy. Different right name. Marquette. No, no. It's Marquette. Yeah, it's a different name. It's definitely a different name. <sighs> I'm, uh, but it's so but, charming. I mean, we were we're confused now. <laughs> we were confused then. We'll always I've, be confused. I've watched it two times in the last week. <laughs> I'm confused. And that's great. They, they went to so much trouble to, to worry about the J and the M stuff. <laughs> it's... <laughs> Look up ham fisted in the dictionary, and it's like the way they try to incorporate J and M in the 2001 feature film Valentine. Kate, <laughs> then Kate catches her boyfriend drinking some booze. I've been looking all over for you, he says, and I wasn't at the bottom of the bottle, she replies. Ooh. After school specials. <laughs> so kind now of. Paige is in the jacuzzi in her bathing suit. Uh, the killer comes through the door. Uh, but he's gone when she looks. Um, there's a rose in the jacuzzi. She's intrigued. She tries to find whoever left it there, and then she's attacked by the killer, thrown in the jacuzzi. The lid is shut over her, and then he <laughs> has ac- instant access to a drill that he uh, <laughs> uses to um, eventually uh, drill <laughs> into her and kill her. <laughs> it's so. not even like a work site. It's not like they were expanding <laughs> their mansion there and there were a bunch of tools. It's a completely, it looks like William Randolph Hearst's pool. <laughs> like it, everything's perfect. And they're like, yeah, it's this big old rusty power drill next to the sauna. This causes the lights to go out. And um, it also causes the party to just instantly end. It went from <laughs> like 300 people to, to five in a few seconds. Everyone just left. Uh, Dorothy suggests to Kate that um, maybe her alcoholic boyfriend's a killer. And then Dorothy goes on a rant about how she never got over, uh, you know, being the ugly girl in junior high. Um, and then Kate Kate dials. So I guess that happens so that it will mislead the audience into thinking, oh, uh, Dorothy is a killer, Tom. Yeah, I, I just love that conversation when, when Dorothy's like, well... The killer could be your boyfriend. And then Kate's like, well, 
by that same logic, the killer could be your boyfriend. And she's like, don't you say that. <laughs> like, it's, it's great. I yeah, like there's Kate. There's a lot of I drama mean... there. Yeah. Kate's great. Kate's one of my uh, all-time favorites of, of any of these movies. She's she's fantastic. Yeah, she is great. Um, so then Kate dials the, the cop's phone and then hears it rigging. Oh, my God, it's on the property. She follows it to the goldfish pond where, boom, there's the detective's head floating in the water. When did when did the killer have time to do all this and still be like at the party? And there, oh, she sees the IOU note that she wrote to her boyfriend. So like he dropped that in the process of killing the cop, Charlie. Yeah, and he he had just been killing the rich girl in the basement and the maid, right? <laughs> I love the yeah. maid. Yeah. Oh. So- that the rich girl killing the 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 other girlfriend that just happened before he, the scene where you see him chugging the champagne. So yeah, he he's been very busy and he's <laughs> he loves posing the um the bodies in such a way that the um <laughs> unsuspecting victims will get a shock, but he's not even there to appreciate it. He's just like he hopes he hopes his practical joke works. What what if what if the other J- JM person is his assistant? Oh, it's just he's behind the scenes, like doing nice. the, the dirty work, you know. Uh, no, there's multiple killers in this movie. I'm telling you, we could, I <laughs> and he was a medical study student. this thing. Yeah, I, so he yeah. could sever a head, and you know, I still think I think um, for, multiple think killers. It's Denise Richards, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm gonna stop talking about it, but you know what I think. She runs inside, uh, and there he is. Uh, they dance for a bit. She, and then she needs him in the groin. By he, I mean her alcoholic boyfriend, but she's figured out that he's the uh, killer. So the, she runs up stairs and finds Dorothy's room has been ransacked. Um, the killer follows her up there. She runs down the back stairs and sees Paige dead in the jacuzzi. Then she sees the killer again, breaks a bottle over his head, then finds the dead girl in the bathroom. Then she tries to use the phone, but it's beeping for some reason. She grabs a gun, struggles to get it loaded. What is going on here, Charlie? It, I, I kind of like the ambiguity with uh, the Adam here. He does a pretty good job when he's walking around and he's he's saying a lot of vague stuff. Like he when he shows up, he says, um, "She says to him, it's you," and he says, "It's me." And he he's supposed to be possibly a little drunk, but he also looks a little evil too. And yeah. she says, "You're still here." You know, it's cool. I like, I like that. Right before she knees him, but um, there's kind of a weird um ambiguity, and I don't know. I give them both a little props. So what ha- So I don't even know what happens. So then there, there's a struggle, and somehow it gets to the point where Dorothy has the mask on, and they shoot her. He stages he- it that way. He ha- takes her. She's been like knocked out. Dorothy She's not has. dead. Dorothy. She's like knocked out or something. No, not knocked out, but captive. And he puts the mask on her and pushes her through there. Okay. So she tumble, 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 wakes up so it looks like she's alive and still a threat. Then she gets shot. Okay. So, and then the, the sad truth is that then his nose starts bleeding. So we figure out, oh, it was him all along. Uh, but Kate doesn't know. So poor Kate is there in the arms of, of her boyfriend not realizing he's the killer. She thought it was Dorothy. So God only knows what's going to happen. Uh, but that's the end of the movie. And She uh, doesn't react yeah. to the blood drips on her face. When I was watching, I was like, feel something. But they, they, it's almost like they should have just had the blood drip like onto her shirt. Or I, I don't know, but it would have... Yeah. It makes you think, hey, do something. And then the end credits roll. Um, And that's yeah. the movie. Uh, there's a lot... We... <laughs> We still have a lot of questions, a <laughs> lot of questions. But I had a I had a grand old time watching Valentine. I liked it better than than I remembered it. Um, it had just you know I just liked the girls hanging out and talking about what might be happening, but not being really that worried about it or as much as they should be. Uh, I didn't like the sleaziness. I didn't like the art um, the art show, of course. And and just the glossy, you know, the glossy feel of a, a movie from 2001. 
But in terms of uh, story, like it feels like it could have been written in 1983 and only filmed in 2001. So uh, I really like that. Uh, so Valentine it was a good old ride. Charlie, your review. Yeah, it, it has that feel. I like how you said 1983 because it reminds me of like a paperback horror that you would find in a used bookstore and uh, pick it up and you could just like in, have a great time with it, but you're not really thinking too hard about it. Um, so it, it, it just has such a lightness to it. It doesn't feel there's slee a little bit of sleaze that 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 I agree with you, but um, the horror and like the killings don't feel so malicious. It's it's yeah. just more of your slasher with um, who's gonna get it next. Yeah. And, and when the maid is dead, you're just like what the maid? Yeah, what? <laughs> there's plenty of those parts where yeah, that that's almost comedy, and uh, that's a that's quite a good. How thing. does he have time to kill all these people? Oh my god, you think he would have <laughs> held up? You know what? It, this movie is like a brain teaser because it keeps you on your toes because it doesn't have everything even figured out. So <laughs> we're trying to figure out what it wants us to know it's and what it yeah. thinks it's telling us, you know? Yeah. So uh, there's multiple levels and um, it just washes over you with um, a lightness and um, fast pace. I loved it. Yeah. Tom. Yeah. Yeah, it's it was much more enjoyable than I remember too. I remembered some of the scenes with, like the Denise Richards in the bedroom scene, and some of the, some of the some other minor moments, but nothing really. I couldn't remember like the plot really or most of the characters. So it was kind of nice to to experience it all again. It's totally, it's not boring. It's not slow at all. There's enough, you know, odd moments that keep you keep you engaged. Like even if you're not really paying attention. You don't miss anything, but if you are paying attention, like you sit back, like every five minutes, like wait a second, like yeah. that makes no sense. Yeah, it makes more so, sense if enjoyable. you're not paying attention. Yeah, if you pay too close attention, yeah, you'll you'll start to, you know, get into <laughs> logical uh, <laughs> loopholes that you can't get out of. Charlie, and so, and so we watched this for Shock December. Yeah, I think and that so. was two thousand one. Yeah. No, we watched it. That was an 03. Oh, that was oh, an 02. Oh, 02. 02. 02. Wow. So it was a recent movie. Yeah. It was a good one. Was it for Shock December? Movie. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. I, yeah. I think it was. So, yeah. Oh, the early ones, yeah. So right, we had uh, some you know, time away. It might have been an 03, but w- whatever. Um, <laughs> but it, yeah, that's funny. It was, it was a new movie, but it was good. And, um, I mean, it reminds me of Gossip. Just everything about it, it just feels. Oh yeah, very much. Yeah. Does it have an art show as well? I, I, I very much might. It, it, the same style and everything. I, I, I can't. I gotta watch Gossip again sometime. Did we do Gossip for? Have we done Gossip for Shock or no? No. It, you know, Gossip is arguably like. <laughs> I don't think it would be in the horror section. I love it. Don't get me wrong. Um, it's more of just like a little a thriller. I, guess. I have the I have the novelization here in my. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so next time I'm over, I'm I might thumb can check that, that out. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it's 2001. We we went over it, but it, it's a little too glossy for our our liking. But um, but refreshingly um, light. Oh, uh, that's that's what I'm happiest about, Charlie. And you you know what? I think that um, this movie is kind of like a little bit of a forgotten movie, and in a way, some '80s slashers are are much more prominent and still watched now than this one is. Um, oh, yeah. It's out of print on DVD. You don't hear a lot of people talking about it, even though it's a Halloween, like a, a holiday horror movie. Yeah. Um, I think it's ripe for like. Rediscovering and talking yeah. about, yeah, yeah, we're leading the charge. Yeah, yeah, that's got a lot of people in it too. If that, you know, that have been in, like, you know, yeah, big Manchino name actors or yeah. Crazy Anatomy or you know th- different things. Yeah, and you know what? I was able to watch it with Teresa, so um, it yeah, it, give it points for its ease of on the eyes and ears and like something a little newer. I think that was good for us in the marathon to have something so easy yeah. to watch. Get to break it up, yeah. yeah. One other, just just random little thing is, you know, the um, the killer guy was also in Angel, that show Angel. Right. Oh. Yes. Yes. And 
And at one point, someone says to him, you're no angel. Ah. Oh, yeah. So someone had to throw that in there, I guess. But it's, well, oh, was he, <laughs> already, it's nice... was he already on the show at that point? Yes. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah. That makes it worse. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was just couldn't resist. luck of the draw. Um, yeah, so um, check out um, Valentine if you can, folks. Um, and uh, I guess I guess we covered it. You feel you guys feel good? Yeah, that was great. Yeah, I am oh, a little. Only... Oh, what do you got time? Go for it. I just had one point that I forgot to mention earlier that the that the three girls that they get killed, they all are enclosed in something. I don't know what that means, but like the first one is in a body bag, the second one's in a dumpster, and the third one's in the pool. Jacuzzi, yeah, yeah. And I, was, I didn't know why that was happening, but it was a weird uh, circumstance that I, I meant to bring up that we, we could debate it, not right at the end, but yeah. here, here we are. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I think it is a movie that can be studied. I, I, I mean it. And um, yeah. there's so much going on there, Charlie. And double yeah. feature with Urban Legend, because there's a lot in Urban Legend where you're kind of, trying to figure things out and is the killer believable I, I like that you know these this valentine and urban legend together same director he he did two fun movies um listeners check in with us if there's any chance that um denise richards killed maybe at, at least i think she killed the guy with the rhyming guy i think she was just annoyed by the rhyming guy and she <laughs> murdered him just <laughs> randomly <laughs> Uh, amidst amidst all the chaos, you know, and maybe Dorothy <laughs> killed that, the that maid too, you know. Dorothy just happened to kill the maid on that night because she was mad, you know. Like, how about that? There's just lots of people doing killings. <laughs> I'm just throwing that out there. <laughs> maybe we got to get Denise on the <laughs> show. <laughs> Let's call her up. Yeah. I'll, hey, we got uh, Joel S. Rice. Uh, for Tom and Charlie, this is Matt Farley saying good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.